Yeah, okay, well, what's not widely, as widely known is that I always intended to do that. So I had, uh, you know, through my life, I had, I was pretty deterministic. So I, uh, I developed myself um, a life plan and a career plan. And I wrote those things out, things that I wanted to do and achieve. And it's amazing that the, the deliberative power that that can uh, deliver, that if you commit to something, it's amazing that you can actually achieve it. And so in my career plan, um, I'd identified that I want to get into Parliament by 40, I got in at 39. Um, if I didn't, I was going to take another career path. And I wanted to, it was then the Kennett government who was ever present and quite popular at that time. I then wanted to serve in opposition as a shadow minister, shadow treasurer, and eventually come to government and be premier. And I'd identified when that would be on my timelines. And then, then I had, and I still kept that notion, my wallet's in my back pocket, I wanted to serve for two terms and then retire. So I'd actually predetermined that that's what I wanted to do. You wanted to um, retire mid, mid-term, surfing? Yeah, well, I wanted, uh, after, after winning two terms, I wanted to retire. Right. Um, because um, there's, in, in politics and public life, uh, usually... Um, leadership positions such as mine end in tragedy. That is, um, either you're, you lose at an, elec- at an election uh, or you're dumped by your own party or you go out and scandal. They're usually the, one of three ways that happen anywhere around the world. And so I wanted to go out on my terms when things were going well with good succession planning in place for others to take over and to have the notion in my head that whilst things were going well and, you know, um, things were going very well when I... Uh, I retired after seven and a half years um, into my third term after winning the th- third election, um, more than I expected in my plan. I was of the view that you never know what's around the corner and going out when things are going well is probably a better way to go. I always thought there was a test there that if I had have left and people said, oh, yeah, it's about the right time to leave, it would have been the wrong time. It would have been too late. But if you've left and people said, oh, I'd like him to go on longer, it's probably the right time. You know, so that was a view. So that's the background to me sort of winning, entering Parliament and staying as long as I did because I'd always predetermined I wanted to do it. And you're right, I predetermined that because I knew this would take a toll on me long term if I stayed too long. And I wanted to be able to do other things and achieve other things almost a new career, and I've been able to do that with other boards and things that I've been involved in. And also yeah, more engagement and time for family, you're right, as part of that as well. So I wanted to do that before the job ate me up. Right. Before it ran me, I wanted to run it. And um, that's really where I took it, and that was the, the, the rationale. So people were surprised. But some people close to me weren't because they knew what I was about. They knew what the plan was. Um, and they knew what I wanted to achieve. I probably stayed longer than I would have uh, envisaged at the start. But, right. but it was the right decision in retrospect because, mm. you know, as you can see, I'm intact, able, able to do other things. Yeah, not, I don't have any regrets. Uh, I don't feel unfulfilled, mm. which can be a, a thing if someone is, you know, so let's say they're Premier and they lose an election after their first election, they, there would be a sense of lack of fulfilment in that. I don't have that. You know, I made my own choices at my own time on what I believe was the, in the best interest of, you know, the party I led and the uh, the government, but also in my best interest too. Right. So this family situation, that was, it sounds like that was more like a catalyst for, it was like, okay, now is the, now yeah. is the time. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing is that, um, uh, the thing about politics is you say, you, you know, you're not involved uh, or active, but um a political career is actually not a career. It's more like a vocation. It is a you know twenty four hours, seven day a week type role. Um, you live and breathe it, you know. And um, and so so my view was I could only do that for so long, really. I, I could only you know, and you you, know, you try not to neglect your family in the process, but it's unavoidable. You know, if the responsibilities of position I had that I I probably did in that period of the seven years as Premier, because 
everything else seems so important that it's really hard to concentrate. Now, I'm not someone who, um, you know, so <laughs> I've never, so when I grew up, I had four sisters, three older, one younger. I've always had women around me. I've never been the, the person to be in a pub on a Friday night with the mates. I always found that boring. You know, I was someone who just loved sort of mixed company, if you like, you know, loved that. And that was you know, something I've always been like. So mixed company, you, you mean you enjoyed hanging out with women? Absolutely. Yeah. Just friends. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm probably not a typical uh, from that point of view, yeah. but that's just me. Uh, that's where I came from and that's, that's how I uh, lived my life. And so getting back uh, to a period where I could engage with my family more effectively was something I always wanted to do. And I, I, knew, I knew I couldn't you know, be in that vacation at uh, a premier for seven years and, and, and do it for 14, for example, because that would have, would have run me, would have overtaken me. And so having a finality to it, having a way of getting back to the family uh, was pretty important from my point of view. 